What is up guys? Welcome back and welcome to the first monthly favorites of 2022. December was when I did my year-end roundups, which if you haven't watched them, they're a whole lot of fun and they'll really catch you up on everything that we did last year. But I have a fresh round of really, really exciting things to show you guys that I have been like wholeheartedly loving that have been bringing me so much serotonin and joy in January, which we all need because, well, at least in this hemisphere, it's very cold. We need something to make our hearts grow three sizes, and that's what these things have done. I want to start the video first, though, by thanking today's sponsor. You guys know that I love Ana Luisa. I have partnered with them many, many times here on my channel, but this is a very special one because we're coming up on Valentine's Day. And, you know, some people kind of dread Valentine's Day when they hear about it, but they're doing a buy one, get one 40% off. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be an occasion that's near and dear to your heart necessarily for you to take advantage of that. I don't know. I'm Kind of taking a different angle on it this year. I have just been trying to be mindful through the beginning of this year, through 2022, of just taking some self-care moments. I'm taking like a solo trip to New York City this weekend. I'm just trying to be mindful in the moment of like, do I need to exercise right now or do I just need to take a nap? What is self-care to me? Getting something new and accumulating things in my life, am I doing it because I'm bored or trying to kind of like fill a space in my life or am I doing it because I feel like it's something that like adds something to my life and is in alignment with my values? And that's one of the really big reasons that I continue to partner with Ana Luisa is because they really hit all the marks for me. In my opinion, it's quite affordable for what it is. It is all gold-plated jewelry that is plated in-house. They use only recycled gold and they're carbon neutral, so they're also sustainable. And I think that it is really, really beautiful stuff. They've got a ton of different styles. I will share them with you here. But as far as gifting is concerned, I think that you're going to see throughout this video, the theme for me lately has been to me, from me. <laughs> and just really, really investing in the things that I know I'm going to enjoy and love wearing because I really get a lot of fulfillment out of, you know, self-expression through my appearance. So I'm gonna share with you guys my new pieces from Ana Luisa. You have probably seen them quite a bit, but um, some of them are a little more subtle. So the first one being, I mean, this ring that is malachite. Malachite is a stone, if you adhere to these things, if you believe in them, it is a stone of action. You know, it's about making making things happen. A lovely thing for me, but also I just really love green. You guys know that I'm just really into green in general. And then I also got little studs right here for my third holes, which have finally healed up. Let me get closer here. Fits perfectly. My piercer is amazing. He wanted to make sure that it fit like perfectly into that little notch in my ear because my second holes are kind of not even, but they're these really gorgeous little opals. Oh, I just love them. I can't believe how much of a visual statement they make just as like studs from far away, you know, but they're very, very, they're just so pretty. Like they make me feel so pretty. And then finally, as we're talking about Valentine's Day, this one caught my eye immediately. It was like one of their newest styles and I could tell, you know, it was kind of on theme for Valentine's Day, but you know, I have a few different moods in my life, sometimes minimal, sometimes maximal. And this is kind of more in the maximal end. I love including something like this either in a stack or on its own on something that like it really pops on. And it's just this really, it almost looks like candy, you know? There's something very whimsical about it, something that kind of brings me back to my childhood. So make sure you hit the link down below and check out the buy one, get one 40% off sale. And you're going to see this, <laughs> the self love and to me from me kind of theme throughout the video. In fact, stay tuned till the end because I'm going to do something that is highly requested, which is a like mini fashion haul of recent things that I have bought <laughs> for myself. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, make sure that you stick around till the end of my favorites. But I just want to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video and let's go ahead and jump into the rest of my faves. Oh nothing, just showing you guys my cool phone case again. Alright, the first thing that I want to chat about is this new one from Makeup by Mario. This is the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. 
Lip balm. When I saw this online, I immediately was like, that looks a lot like the lip cushions from M Cosmetics. I even said so to State of Kate. And you guys know that that's a pretty high compliment coming from me. That's not like, you're not allowed to do that because someone already did it. I was like really excited to have new colors in that formula if it were to be like that. Turns out it really, really is. I ended up getting Mauve Glow. By the way, I say Mauve. I know that some people insist that I say mauve, but mauve sounds like a schwa, and I need that word to just occupy more space and spread out, so I say mauve. Anyway, this is the Mauve Glow, and what I really dig about this, well, first of all, it is plumping, so that has one more kind of feature than the M Cosmetics lip cushions. I can never remember the name of them. It's a long name, but lip cushion. And the other thing is this is a color that just does not exist in Michelle Phan's line. So one of the things, if you are unfamiliar with this formula that I always say is even with the M Cosmetics ones, this is almost a delivery system that doesn't work because it is so incredibly soft that it is like just this much more firm than a lip gloss. And so that's why it's in the stick form, but why it has this like click instead of just going all the way up and all the way down, because if it went all the way up, it would just break off immediately. It would just smash against your face. And so it's this very, very slow crank up like that, which I think is obviously very intelligent for this formula. So I do love that it does have, it has a little tiny bit of sparkle to it, which is a nice amount. I, I, I'll show you. Just a teeny tiny bit. You can't feel it, which I always get a little frustrated when you can feel the glitter. But this is my favorite shade in the M Cosmetics that I always swear by, it's Venetian Rose. And that's why they've put out this big Venetian Rose, you know, based line is because it's a lot of people's favorite shade. It's just a very, very subtle kind of like cool leaning rosy pink, but you can see those are different enough that it is worth having both in my collection. That Makeup by Mario one is just, ooh. Someone said that like they've been binge watching all of my videos and now they just can't stop thinking in terms of like my turns of phrase. That's dialed in fam. That is a dialed in mauve for me right there. It is so mucky. <laughs> I just love a mucky mauve. And that's what I have on my lips right now with a little bit of my khaki lip liner. It's just ideal. I like it very, very much. And much like, well, unlike the complaint that I had about the Rare Beauty, what was it, the Stay Vulnerable collection where everything was nearly, 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 the nearly mauve wasn't mauve at all. In fact, all of them kind of rushed to the middle as far as like, you know, shying away from being very, committed shades or muddy shades or anything like that. They just didn't have really distinct identities from one another with the exception of the apricot. And I feel like this whole collection, there's something for everybody for whatever shade you're passionate about because it's like if you really love bronzy or you really love like a nice, you know, creamy, creamy nude or something like that, like there is a committed shade for each of those identities. And I feel like they just nailed the mauve. They just nailed that mauve. And I also thought that you guys might wanna see that swatched against like Villa and the Ultra Lip from Glossier. It is a little bit firmer. It's not quite the same formula, but Villa is a lot more similar to, this is Villa right here, a lot more similar to Venetian Rose. And that mauve just stands alone. And I really, really like it. So yeah, I was over the moon pleased with this. I can't stop wearing it because it kind of reminds me a little bit actually of the Illamasqua Picnic Plum in the way that it's just got that really lovely, almost gray purple thing to it that just sets off my natural lip tone. And if that's your thing, this might be your thing, but there are a menagerie of really gorgeous shades in this as well. So definitely check it out. The next thing, and I won't spend too long here because if you've been watching my channel over the last month, you're sick of hearing about it by now. The new Desert Sunset palette from Aether Beauty is just, it's just great. And it's unique for what it is. I'm not gonna say that any palette is 100% unique to every other palette out on the market. Obviously there are thousands of palettes out there. And so there's probably something that looks a little bit like this, but I just like the Aether formula and I like the decisions that she made here. You can see I dip into this now for eyeliner more than I even dip into my Thrive palette because I just dig that color. That's a great, almost black brown. I really, really love this warm brown too. This is a very decidedly like warm palette, but I think it works really well for olive too because these golds are so 
gorgeous. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty, but they both lean slightly green. And I feel like that's what makes them work really well on my skin is they just, they really set off brown eyes for one thing. But I mean, you know, as soon as you get into like golds and coppers and things like that, it's gonna make light eyes pop. Y'all have it easy, okay? It's such a beautiful kind of blending of an artistry palette and a very practical palette because it does have really functional mattes and some really, really lovely kind of satins but the shimmers are kind of what pull it together because it's like you have this beautiful neutrals palette, like warm neutrals palette on the outside. And then this quad in the middle right here is this you know, really bright matte coral. And then these three shades that all either start pink and shift gold or start another color and shift pink. So they do bridge kind of to all the other shades in the palette and they're subtle enough. Like you can build those glitters, those duochromes and get some impact out of them, but you can also use them on a brush and just get a really nice kind of gradient with them. So yeah, I've been loving that. And um, <laughs> my palette is quite manky and loved because I have had this thing since August and I have just been like having to sit on my hands and not tell you guys. The other thing, oh my gosh, you guys, that last video, the trying new stuff from Sephora, I've had this for a while and I knew that I loved the texture of it, but I wasn't sure about like the use case of it, but now I'm sure. I actually bought another one. This is the Twin Flames Multi-Chrome Pigment from Danessa Myricks, one of my favorite geniuses. <laughs> and it is just, lights out. It is freaking crazy. So it looks like it's going to be really, really like hollow, like all the way rainbow, but the effect on the skin is actually this, I mean, yes, it goes kind of rainbow, but it really looks mostly like yellow gold. And then it goes kind of, you know, pinky unicorn. And I love that other than that, it's clear, you know, and so when I use my preferred method of application, which is just to kind of put it on my finger, it stays wet long enough that you can really dab it out and it does go to an absolutely waterproof finish. And it's like a, a waterproof powder finish that's not sticky or tacky at all. And it stays put all day. It is awesome and it's super, super effective. That was one of the things that I had trouble with with the Natasha Denona, what were they called? The multi-chrome whatever they were. I like those and maybe I should try mine again with that same technique, but I found that it just didn't have the visual impact that I was expecting. That was just like you touch it and everything glows. Like this is just magic. It's ma it's magic in a bottle. And I, I did, I bought, uh, I wanna say like the coppery pink one too, just to kind of play with. So yeah, that combo stole my heart in the last video, but at the same time, like, I think that this stands alone. The next thing, and this is again, I, I, something that you guys are probably sick of hearing about, but, and I'm also the, the last person to arrive at the train station on me. So this is the MAC Glow Play Blush, and I have it in the shades Blush Please and Share Up. I know that there are a few others. There's Heat Index that Kate always raves about, and then there's another one that someone recommended to me, like specifically this shade. I don't doubt it and I will pick those up. You know, it, it was just like they didn't have them on Ulta or something wherever I was shopping that day. These are so, to use a word I don't think I've ever used on my channel, they're nifty. They're just really fun. They're very easy to use. I think they're easier to use than the Bounce and Blur from Bare Minerals, marginally. I still love the Bounce and Blur, but there are more shades in this and it's a little bit more of a putty, fluffy, whipped consistency. The Bounce and Blur does still have that funky, silicone-y thing to it where you're like, is it a cream or is it a powder? This is very much a, a whipped, solid putty mousse. <laughs> and it goes on top of anything, powder, cream, what have you, bare skin, and it looks so freaking healthy. It looks so healthy and it goes on so evenly. It feathers at the edges, you can build it. It doesn't get tacky or mucky or anything like that. And the, the finish on it, and I also wanna try the, is it called extra impact, extra, extra glow, something like that. There's another formula of this that has a little bit of shimmer to it that I saw on Beauty Unhyped. Yeah, she made, she kind of sold me on that one. So I've been sleeping on Mac. You guys know I've been sleeping on Mac for a while and I, I'm kind of waiting for like another big push from them, like another big release from them to kind of like, 
woo, you know, wait till it's trending, but I might just have to go and like, you know, do like a full deep dive on MAC blushes specifically. Okay, and so this might be the last makeup favorite before we get into some other, you know, skincare odds and ends, whatever, but sneak about. Yeah, so this old New York Sneaky Balm, I knew it was gonna be good because I just kind of, I don't know, Kiki had told me what her plans for it were. I knew what to expect and her video really drove that home, but the thing that really blew my mind about the Sneaky Balm that I didn't really get across in that video was how it looks after a full day of wear. It's so beautiful. Okay, so do you see how right here on my face, maybe from frowning or whatever, just making facial expressions. I have, you know, I have a groove right here and it's starting to kind of like pinch into like fine lines. And it doesn't really bother me, but sometimes I don't really know what it is in certain foundations or powders or whatever. It just doesn't want to always look good right there. Like it'll just flex wrong or the makeup will gather. And I feel like it just kind of exaggerates that funny little like bend right there and how it's sort of starting to, it's getting its own little crow's feet on the edges. The Sneaky Balm stays so meow. The Sneaky Balm stays so supple and it keeps my skin so hydrated without being like mucky all day. That was the first thing that I noticed was at the end of the day, even midday, I would catch myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, you can't see that weird like thing that's happening on my chin that happens with so many other foundations. I'm wearing the NARS foundation today because I really, really like it, but it does kind of gather a little bit more powder. It's just a little bit more makeup. And so I am starting to get that a little bit. Some people get smile lines, things like that. That was my biggest thing that I was impressed with with the Sneaky Balm was how flexible it stayed all day, but kind of like self-recovered in a way that did not settle into lines which was so awesome. So yeah, I just had to mention that because a lot of times, you know, we talk about these kinds of things, it's sort of a trade-off, like you're gonna get less wear time out of something like this, but even though it changes over the day because it's going to kind of like soak into your skin, it looks better than a lot of other makeup that I wear over the day. All right, next, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, this is kind of also getting into to me from me for Christmas kind of things. <sighs> I finally bit the bullet, you guys, and I've been posting about it on Instagram. <laughs> because when you're wearing it, you just have to take a picture of yourself. It's funny looking. This is the Dennis Gross LED mask. It's $435, okay? And I did end up paying full price for this like a fool because they did they, they go on sale here and there, and I basically bought the light stim for wrinkles during the Sephora sale. And then someone in my comments was like, you should return that and just go for the LED mask. And I was like, you're right. And so I did. And so I, <laughs> I bought that one during the sale, got my money back, which made absolutely no difference whatsoever. And then I bought this at Christmas time, instead of it being discounted on Sephora, instead they just put a bunch of really great full size skincare in there from Dennis Gross. So I have like an eye cream. I have his new retinol and ferulic that smells like ketchup. I have his, I had a bunch of his like little wipey pads and stuff like that, which I am now hopelessly addicted to. So yeah, I mean, I don't really mind. The main thing is this thing is the bomb. So it goes, I won't look right at it, but it goes red light, that's for acne. It goes purple, that's for anti-aging. And then it has like amber, which is like both. And I just run this thing for as long as I daggum have time for at any given time. And I use, this is, I know it's silly, but I was sent a box of alcohol wipes to use when I give myself my auto injector every month. and you will not work your way through one of those boxes this century. So I was just like, all right, you know, if I've got these little alcohol wipes and I'm already using them for X, Y, and Z, what a nice thing to have to clean all of my devices with, you know, because you do, you want to wipe the inside of that off every time you use it because it's like your skincare and I mean, it's making direct contact with your face. So you want to do that. I clean my glasses with them. I clean my, my other, my light stem with it. Um, it's really, those things are phenomenal. They're great for everything, but, uh, but yeah, so that's the hygiene associated with it. And I've just been really, really enjoying this, especially as I was like breaking out over my period and everything. This has made such a huge difference. This in combination with my retinol, you don't want to 
put it on, you don't want to wear it if you've already put on like SPF or something, but I have found no problem with using it on top of a retinol. All right, I'm gonna talk about some odds and ends and some uh, media, and then I'm going to talk fashion. The first thing is something that I, joke's on me, right? I got an email from this company and they were like, you know, would you like to do a sponsorship with us over Christmas or what have you? And I sent them my rates and I never heard back from them. <laughs> they were like, no, I don't think so. But it was <clears throat> the company Aura Frames and well, I checked out their offering and I ended up spending a lot of my own money on there for Christmas gifts. So basically it is like a digital frame. You know, everybody's seen like digital photo frames before, but I don't know, they just kind of got it down to a science. It turns off when the lights turn off. Like it's just got a lot of little intelligent intangibles built into it that I wasn't even expecting. Now that I've gotten to see both of them in person because I bought one for my mom and one for my mother-in-law. The cool thing is once you buy it, as soon as you buy it, it goes, do you want to upload a bunch of photos to it? Because they have like an infinite cloud storage thing. And I'm like, yeah, obviously, because the main thing was to put pictures of my kid on it. Both grandmothers are obviously obsessed with their respective first grandchild. And we take so many pictures of him. And I mean, I, I'm not biased, but he's like incredibly photogenic. And I dress him so cute. So um, there are just so many really, 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 really cute pictures of him. And neither of them particularly minds having a, a photo frame that's just circulating pictures of like hundreds of pictures of Simon at all times. So you load it up, you have this little app on your phone and you can just like load it up really easily. And then as soon as they plug it in and hook it up to the internet, boom, it's already done. Just like, lo just load it up with pictures of their grandkid. And it's like the sweetest thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank Aura for not sponsoring me, but just making me aware that they exist because that was a home run for Christmas gifts. That was really, really good. They're expensive, they're like 200 bucks. But uh, that was because I got like the really, really like big fancy ones. But man, if you got, if you got a grandparent in your life, <laughs> Like that is like the, that is just such a layup. Like here, have this thing that shows high res photos of your grandchild all day long. <laughs> oh, and it has these little bars on, it has a bar on the top where you can just sit there and like do a slideshow. And there's this little function in the app where when I like want to show a certain picture, I can be like, mom, look at the frame, boop. And it'll beam a certain picture just like straight to her frame all the way from, what am I doing? What do I got here? I blew my nose all the way from New Jersey to Florida. So gotta love that series of tubes uh, that is that is the internet and the cloud. So um, yeah, thank you technology and, uh, and, and the Aura Frame is amazing. Okay, let's chat two shows that I have been loving. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about The Office. I like The Office. Uh, we've been watching The Office just absolutely nonstop, but the two, the, two, the two ones that I've been watching, the first one being the new season of Cheer. So Mike and I were very, very curious, as I'm sure many of you who really liked the first season and know what has transpired since would be. And that is, you know, like, how are they going to handle all the really weird uh, legal stuff, the drama with some of their athletes and stuff, you know, going to jail and things like that. And man, they handled it so honestly and upfront. I was very, very pleased about that, that they didn't try and glaze over it. We seem to be in an age right now of people really valuing total transparency, and I'm glad that they valued that as well. I mean, obviously, there's no such thing as like total transparency, especially when it's in like an edited together show. But man, I mean, it was just so different, but also so like such a, a, an improvement even on the first season. I feel like they did an excellent job with it. It wasn't just that like pure serotonin that the first season is, but at the same time, I feel like they kind of couldn't have just repeated that because too many things happened. <laughs> And they couldn't just ignore the complexity of those conversations. And I'm glad that they came to it like head on. So uh, I really enjoyed that. And if you were kind of dreading watching the show because you're like, are they just gonna not talk about Jerry at all? They, they talk about Jerry. <laughs> they talk about it. They talk to the victims, everything. It is, I think, very well done. And the other show, and I wanna thank a viewer for recommending this to me. <laughs> she was like, did you know that there's a show called The Great Pottery Throwdown, which is a phenomenal pun, 
that is on, it's on HBO Max, but I think it's, you know, probably from like Channel 4 the same way that The Great British Baking Show is. Same format as The Great British Baking Show. I'm already getting goosebumps talking about it, but it's all pottery. I did a lot of wheel throwing in college. I took it for two semesters. I was in love with it. It is just such Oh, it is such a fun process. I love it so much. And it's something that you have to come to with total vulnerability, which I really appreciate. It will call your mental state in that moment into question on any given day. It was the one thing in my life that I could not drink coffee before I did it because I needed to be in a total state of calm. And it forces you to do that you know that that is the answer. If you are not succeeding at wheel throwing, it's because you're not calm enough. And the only way to conquer whatever you're trying to get over is to just like lower your heart rate. And I like that as a challenge. I've actually thought, and I've, it's one of those things like big magic, right? Where I've thought about it and therefore if I don't do it, someone else is gonna go do it or someone probably already has. But I thought it would be really cool to have an art exhibition where, and this would have to be post COVID because touchy touchy, but if you had to like touch like a big like glass orb or something and you could only see the art if you could lower your heart rate or your breathing to a certain pace, like a very nice low calm pace. And it's like, it would get like more lit as you were able to calm yourself. So it would be like an exhibit that you literally could only take in if you were meditating on your own personal state of calm. I don't even know what the art would look like that you would look at. It would have to be some kind of a reward, but uh, yeah, wouldn't that be neat? I think that'd be neat, very personal. Anyway, um, I love that wheel throwing always did that for me. And so it was like, I had this personal connection to it far more than I do with baking, although, Baking really impresses me for that reason. I like watching anybody who is good at something do the thing that they are good at. You know, that's why I love watching cheer. I told Mike, I was like, I like proficient people being proficient at their thing. That's why I love the Olympics, but it doesn't matter. I would watch someone stack cups. <laughs> you know, I just like watching someone be good at something. So yeah, I have thoroughly enjoyed the great pottery throwdown. And the best part about it was we finished the season that we were watching and then another season started and I was like there's more than one season oh my god and Mike was like looks it up he's like there's a lot of seasons actually I think there's like four and so uh yeah we have a lot ahead of us and I'm so excited <laughs> oh 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 and I wrote down in my notes like I wrote down all of my favorites and I literally wrote down great pottery throwdown and then I wrote down Keith cry <laughs> because one of the judges I mean there are two judges a male and female Keith is the male and Instead of getting a Hollywood handshake, it's if you make Keith cry. <laughs> He's, cause it, it's such an emotionally vulnerable art form, like I said. So, so it doesn't even have to be because something is really, really perfect. It's more if someone had a breakthrough or he sees that someone really put their heart and soul into something or something came out far more exquisitely than he ever imagined or like that it transcends some kind of understanding of what he could have done with the medium or something. It's so sweet. It kind of comes out of nowhere every time, but he's just this very, very tall man who, you know, he's sort of imposing. Like he's a very like, you know, broad shouldered tall guy. And then he just gets like emotional about pottery and it's the best thing I've ever seen. So I had to add that. Okay, let's, let's do some fashion. I'm not gonna try them on. I will just stick some photos in either if I've taken a picture of myself wearing them or if I have pictures of models in them because I just want this to be kind of a lightning round. And I wanted to make a uh, disclaimer that um, I know that a lot of these things are pricey. I did use either gift cards, like that I got as gifts to mitigate some of that, and or I got them on Black Friday and, you know, got a really good price on a lot of them. I don't think I paid full price for anything on here. Yeah, so uh, actually one thing, I paid full price for one thing. Let's go ahead and commence with this. Understand that this is in lieu of me buying a bunch of things that aren't going to last on like, you know, less expensive stores, things like that. These are items that I am absolutely in love with. And 
I like things to have visual impact on camera. That's the other thing. It's sort of an investment for me in that, that sense. So I'll start with <clears throat> one of the biggest ticket items. <laughs> And yes, I did use uh, part of a gift card that my sister gave me for Christmas to buy these. And you guys, I've never owned anything other than makeup by Gucci before, but you guys remember me talking about Alessandro Michele, the uh, creative director of Gucci, being interviewed on 60 Minutes and how just, it, it hit my soul. Like I just loved watching someone like that talk about how they get inspired and what inspires them. And he was just walking around Rome in these. And I just immediately glommed on. I was like, I, I, those are the, cause I've always wanted a pair of the mules, but like none of them really ever thrilled me because they didn't feel special enough. Like a lot of them have kind of giga on them and like bees and stuff like that. Or they're like in these really, um, I would say like porous kind of patterns, things that aren't gonna really stand the test of time. I still wanted leather. And also I was like black or brown, black or brown, because like it just never felt like one of them was going to be like universally useful for me. And by God, if you're gonna spend this much money, you want it to be universally useful. And then when I saw those, I was like Bordeaux, like that wine color, that goes with everything in my wardrobe. I could wear it with black, I could wear it with brown. It's got the blue, it's got the red. I just gagged over the tassels, needed the tassels in my life. You guys, the amount of times that I woke up in the morning <laughs> and reloaded the Nordstrom website to see if they had my size in stock, I ordered them one time and the purchase went through and then they emailed me and they were like, it got canceled, it's actually out of stock. I really feel like there was one pair of 39s that was just circulating the country for a while and when it finally came back into stock because it didn't fit somebody who ordered them, I was like, add the cart, like first thing in the morning before I even fed my child. That's how excited I was to get these. And when they finally came, I actually was not at all disappointed. I was like, they are ideal. I waited so long and I pursued these so hard and I finally got the Gucci loafers that I'm probably going to have for the rest of my life. They're just perfect. The only thing about Gucci loafers is they have no traction whatsoever. So I might have to either just, you know, scuff them up or uh, get like the little traction things that you that you put on the bottoms of them because they're just like slippy sliding on carpet. So I gotta be careful, but um, oh my gosh. And so comfortable. And guys, I wore them to the mall when we had like a warm day. Every, per I did not anticipate this. This is definitely not why I bought them. But like every person like looks at me and goes, at my shoes and I'm just like, hmm. yeah, you like that. <laughs> they're just, cause they're so pretty. <laughs> they're just really, really pretty. Like that's just a very pleasing silhouette to me. So yeah. Yay, I'm just so happy about that. Yeah. Let's talk about Farm Rio. So I got both of these on very massive discount. I have learned about Farm Rio that they are sold so many places that it is pretty silly to pay full price for anything on their website because it's not going it's not going to go out of stock. Someone's going to put it on sale eventually. Sorry, I'm trying to button this button so that you can see the silhouette. So this is the first one and it is the stinking cutest thing that I have ever seen in my life. I'm obsessed with it. I think it started out at like $300. I got it for like 119, I want to say. And oh, uh, it's like, it's like, okay, so I'm an introvert and I don't love social events, but if I've got an outfit to wear, you sign me up. You know what I mean? I'll take any invitation. So, uh, you know, I buy these things to kind of not just look nice on camera, but also to facilitate having any social life whatsoever. Um, I love that this is high neck and it fits so beautifully and then it cinches at the waist. And even though it's like a mini dress length, it's long enough. You know, I don't feel like I need to wear like bike shorts with it or something. It is so cute. It is so cute. <sighs> so cute. The next one is this one. I got this one on Saks. I want to say it was similar. It was like 325 or something and I got it for like a hundred bucks. So it is gorgeous. It's got, it's very, very similar in silhouette to the turquoise one that I have, but it's a little bit different. It has like these really cool sleeves on it and it's less fancy in a good way. Like I don't feel like I have to like wait for an event to wear it. I just put on a pair of boots with this and it's just like an everyday dress. All their stuff feels very machine washable, which is nice. I don't know if I'd machine wash that one because it's cotton, it would probably shrink. But like this feels like I could at least just hand wash it. And it's got um, <clears throat> a lining dress in here too, which I always appreciate, you know, it's like separate. And it's just really beautiful. It's full, full, full length. And I throw some boots on with it. It's very, very pretty. I actually love to wear this Ana Luisa necklace with it. Cause like, it's actually like when I don't have it on the hanger, it's open. And like, you can just stack necklaces on it, pull my hair back. And I feel like, you know, somewhere in between 
New York Fashion Week and Stevie Nicks. You know, it's just, it's just the right amount of dystopian cowgirl fortune teller. <laughs> and finally in the, well, this isn't really finally in the dresses category. A lot of people have been asking me about this, but finally in the light, lightweight dresses category. This is from a designer called Carolina Kay. I paid full price for this. It was very expensive. But it is the prettiest thing that I have. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's a caftan and it does come with a waist tie. And for people with no chest like me, this is just such a beautiful silhouette. It just has enough kind of like boyishness up here. And I tried so hard not to get bronzer on the neck and I still got bronzer on the neck and that's fine. It's cotton. It's so well made. It's so beautiful, but it's so lightweight. I love this silhouette where it's kind of like ruched right here and ruched on the back so you have like this very flowy amount of material but it's got this nice like longish you know cap sleeve situation it's very very flattering for my body it basically like trims me at the waist in a really flattering way it's just a magical silhouette and her stuff sells out so quickly and that was just why i paid full price for it was because i was like okay every other dress from her i have ever seen and loved like has sold out, I'm just gonna jump, I'm gonna jump on it. And there's still one that I want really badly from her that they don't have in my size and I can't find anywhere. So yeah, that was why. It was just a rare opportunity and I just went for it and I'm so happy, it's so pretty. Mind you, this is over the last like three, four months. So, you know, bear that in mind. Next, I got, I got a couple sweaters. So this one I love so very, very much. It's really funny, it came full circle because um, back in the day, Ms. Ingrid Nilsson had this sweater that she was raving about on her channel. I want to say it was from Vince, it might've been Theory, I can't remember. But she was like, this is my dream sweater. It's got a shawl collar, I'm obsessed with it, blah, blah, blah. And like, I think in the back of my mind, I have been pursuing that sweater ever since because I'm just like, yeah, that was the perfect sweater. And at the time, me affording Vince was like not a reality, you know? And like, that was one of those styles that was not gonna go on sale kind of thing. And I think that I have spent more money since then trying to mimic the luxury of that style, probably on three or four different sweaters that none of them really scratched the itch. And so I finally saw this on Reformation and I paid the money for it, okay? It is cashmere. <laughs> And it is not messing around. It's so gorgeous. I was wearing it in another video recently. Cosper wear? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I throw this thing on all the time. I actually kind of accidentally took a nap in it the other day, but like it's got the most ideal shawl collar. It's got a ton of material, like a luxurious amount of material. And it's even got like luxuriously, you know, large sleeves. It's so comfy and it's incredibly warm. Like very, very, very warm. It breathes really well and it's not itchy, which is fantastic. But like it was maybe like 37 degrees the other day when I was going to pick up my kid. And I just wore this over my, you know, my t-shirt and jeans because it's warm enough and it does, it wasn't super windy that like, I didn't want to be schlepping around like a coat. So yeah, it's wonderful. Oh, it's so good. Oh, and the full circle about it was that Ingrid then <laughs> messaged me and was like, Hey, where'd you get this sweater? And I was like, girl, come on. <laughs> because I'm guessing she has probably already worn out that sweater from so many years ago. <laughs> and she was just like, that's the perfect sweater. And I'm like, weirdly, I bought it because of a sweater that you wore years ago. So it's the circle of life. And finally, finally, just look away. Look, mom, look away. I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna talk about how much this costs. This is, this is my prized possession. I've worn this for one or two videos now and I'm so, so in love with it. And to be fair, I did send my mother a picture of this at one point and it had the full price on it. And my mother used to own a yarn store. And so, you know, she's knitted a lot, a lot, a lot of garments by hand. And she saw the detail on the sweater and she looked at the price and she goes, yep, that's a fair price for that amount of work because you know, that's a lot of work guys. And someone had to knit that. So, um, oh, this is the Ola Johnson Frida tunic. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. I saw Blair EDB wearing it of uh, Atlantic Pacific. I saw uh, Signed Blake wearing it. And I was just like, ah, oh, that thing is haunting my dreams. And then on Black Friday, I think it was my singular actual on Black Friday purchase. I went on the actual Ola Johnson website and it was 40% off and I had an introductory offer 
you know, for email and everything, it was still very expensive, <laughs> still like really expensive. But they had one left in my size and I was like, oh, I gotta do it, I gotta do it, you know, like YOLO. And oh, it wasn't like final sale or anything. I could have returned it if I wanted to. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it is so hecking warm so hecking warm like i will probably wear this to the city because it's like i don't even need to wear a jacket with it it's so freaking warm and like it's super 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 heavy and so detailed and beautiful i wore this when we went out to dinner for our wedding anniversary and like women stopped me and my husband of course thinks it's gorgeous too but yeah, like women stopped me in the restaurant and they were like, you look incredible. And I was like, thank you, <laughs> it's the sweater. <laughs> it's such a freaking good sweater. So yeah, it's actually, it's a tunic. So it's dress length, but it has like, a, it has like an offset and a slit that goes up basically to like my hip. I wear like you know, pants or a skirt with it or something. It is so incredibly high quality, like ridiculously high quality. And in Ingrid's words, you know, if you're gonna splash out for something like that for Ola Johnson, like, you know, her knitwear is the way to go. So I would just, ugh. oh, it's so perfect. I love it so much. So yeah, it haunted my dreams until I bought it. Fashion, to quote Coco Chanel, who is, you know, 100% unproblematic. I like my money where I can see it, in my closet. So yeah, guys, those are my favorites for this month. Make sure that you hit the link down below in my description box to check out the buy one, get one 40% off sale that Ana Luisa is doing right now. But yeah, thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for watching. So if you did find this valuable or fun, you know, just fun, uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it so much if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.